Uh, over to you, Bilal. Yeah, sorry. Second. There we go. Okay, Bilal, you can get going. Yeah, sure. Um, welcome, everyone. So this is over almost the first session of the new financial year. It's a July, I'm right? So this time our guest is Lynn, and Lynn is going to present us an interesting topic of debugging dataverse flows and getting runtime history of a flow, which is obviously a lot of people facing this nightmare. So I'm sure that you all will get a very informative session and get a lot of information. And then at the end of the will be a QA session, so you can always put type your questions and we can forward you to Lynn and Lynn can answer whenever he will feel. Lynn, all over to you. OK, um, so I'll share my screen. <laughs> so as Bilal mentions, um, the today's session is about the debugging flows, especially around um, Microsoft Dataverse connector. So for those, okay. all these dynamics and um, Bob the form professionals uh, use dynamics uh, Dataverse connector a lot, and so it, I hope that will be useful. And as uh, the second part is around uh, getting the flow run history of a rule, so we have previously there's a call records, and based on this particular the GUID of the role, we've sometimes we need to during the troubleshooting we need to find which particular flow run this, but um is related associated to this role so we need to figure out how, how to find out the flow run history of this role okay so before we start uh, um today's sessions um I, I i i will forward the slides to the organizers towards the end so you they, they will also share with the other members or if you are keen you can also uh, scan this QR code or get to this URL and download the slides because most of the slides they contain the URL to accompany uh, to the related blog posts of mine so if you have any detailed steps to get the formulas and how to do the detailed steps you can go through the blogs and get the step by step um, in this blog post Okay, um, before we start this session, I just would like to introduce a little bit about me. Uh, for those who don't know me, uh, my name is Lin Zorwin. Um, I, I'm Microsoft Business Application MVP, and I'm currently working as a technical architect in the Delta Insights company, which is based in uh, Australia and New Zealand. And I am working at the Wellington, New Zealand, uh, Wellington branch in the New Zealand. Uh, my main focus, I started as the Dynamics CRM um, developer, and then my main focus is Dynamics 365. Uh, but along the way, I started using the Bar Automate Cloud Flows to automate and replace the classic workflows and build the Canvas app to enhance the user experience of some of the screens in some of these applications. When I am not working, I usually uh, do some community contribution in, in this uh, Dynamics uh, Bar Platform community by blogging, uh, forum participation by answering some forum questions and or speaking at the user group like this or some conferences. So you can find me in my blog post in this URL and you can also follow me on Twitter. Um, when I'm not doing any work or any um, community contributions I my hobbies are like games and anime so if you have any similar interest then you can just tweet me and message me and talk about these latest things okay so as I mentioned just now there are two parts in this today agenda the first part is the debugging tips and that is around how to log this output and some tips and tricks around um, that I use when I do the debugging or just testing those flows. And the second part is around getting the particular flow run of the record or road UID. And there are various methods and 
you will have to figure out what would be the best for your um, system environments project based on the complexity. Uh, when I talk about the debugging, the debugging doesn't mean that just to clear the bug. It also means uh, when you try to test run the flows that you just created without actually impacting the real data. So um, the one of the things that I noticed um, a lot of when I ask my colleagues and to do the screen share and when you over observe what they are doing, uh, when they edit the flow and then they just try to save, which takes a few seconds, and then they click on test and run the test flow. So th the, the test is a good feature that you can test based on the recent um, submitted trigger. So let's say if you uh, flow is running on create of a contact and you want to rerun a particular flow run, you can select and test it based on that particular flow run. So I hope you are all using um, in for this particular feature. And actually, you don't actually have to save when you are going to test because the test is the, the, actually the save and text functionality. So you just save yourself a few seconds and just click on test rate and just um, it will the flow will just save automatically and then test automatically. So you don't have to do the two step process. It's similar to uh, the form designer and view designer that the, the modern form and view designer that's the publish button. So which does both save and publish. So don't you don't have to save and publish um, separately. Uh, another part is. Just the uh, compose as logging. So this is somehow. Um, related to. Um, let's say, for example, we have this condition. And in this condition, the first one is the length. The list of all accounts is greater than zero. So the result set of this all account is returns more than zero. And the second part is uh, whether the first owner of the collection is equal to this particular GUID. So when we run this flow, um, actually, it just gets this condition false and then it goes to this node branch. And we don't really know whether which condition goes wrong along the way, whether this condition is wrong or whether this condition is wrong. So you don't really know. But if the if the expression is simple enough, you can log it through. You can check the output of uh, this previous step and check whether OK, this is more than zero records or whether this what is the owner of the first record you can check. But imagine if you have a very complex expression with um, four or five functions. And it, it is really hard to debug through. In, in that case, uh, one of the good thing you can do is you can log it in as the um, function so that when you log it, you can just in the flow run history, you can see what is the value for each. Uh, expression and you can figure out, OK, this is false because this UID is different. So the, the, this is using Comparison logging. Um, it is. OK, when you are doing as a developing and you try to figure out the things, but just be aware that each step costs one API call. So if you're concerned with um, if you want to minimize the number of API calls in your flows, uh, you may want to remove those um, after you have done with the developing with your flows. So the second part is um, show raw outputs. So when I run the flow, let's say I have first one is just listing the top one account and the second one is list all accounts. So if I want to see the list all accounts, if I uh, I can just click on the outputs and click on open it, I can just see all the output of this one. So it is simple. OK, but sometimes the flow designer shows the output as the status reason. 
200. And I don't know what's called, how, how, how can I see the output of this step? And previously, uh, we had to use the compose or some other ways to figure out, but now we can use the show raw outputs and that will show the output of this particular step. So you don't have to um, do those walk arounds to show this when you see the status reason 200. Uh, I, I don't really find it uh, the pattern of when it is show the status reason 200 or when it is show like the link to show the outputs, but I noticed that if it is the one or two very few uh, results that it shows in this way and we have to click on this show raw outputs to see the actual output of this step. So that is one of the tips that. Okay, uh, another step is the skip flow steps during testing. Um, this is important when you're testing the flow and you don't want to run the unnecessary steps. So let's imagine uh, we have this flow called list all accounts. And after list all account, I am just going to delete all these accounts. But before that, I want to run and test this flow because if I run this once, is all the account will be deleted uh, without. I'm not sure whether this is a proper step or not. So in that case, uh, we can use the terminate step to stop and debug the action. So we can debug as the terminate step and succeed it. So in that case, the flow will be terminated in this step and it will not go to the step that you don't want to run unnecessarily until your flow is completed. But using the terminate step uh, means that you will your flow will be terminated at the same time. So let's say if you have a branch, if you have a multiple branch, a parallel branch for this flow, um, terminate step may not be an ideal solution because it will just terminate the whole flow, even the parallel, but parallel branch is still running. So in that case, you will have to choose another thing, um, which is configure run after. So let's say um, we have this list all accounts and this long running process. Okay, we have this list from all percent and then we'll process everything in this long running process. And after that, it will just go to the next step. So we don't want to run this long running process during the debugging session. We just want to run it after it is actually completed. So in that case, during the debugging session, you can use the configure run after to not to run this. You can set it like something um, has failed or has time out or is skipped so that this step is successful. It will skip this long running process. But in order to run the, the subsequent step, you have to set the configure run after step for this one is step. So what that mean is this run, okay, this long running process will run only if the step is skipped, which will not happen. So it, it will skip this one. And this one will run when the, this step is skipped. So it will just skip this process and run this second compose. So let's try and run this in, in this test. So I have a recent test. And if I run, try to run this. I have, I might have uh, open, no. Okay, never mind. Let's try and wait for a few seconds and run it. Okay. It. So well, once it is, this all account is completed, this step is skipped. As you can see the indicator, this step hasn't run and it goes straight to the compost. 
So that means you can skip this log, um, kind of process during your debugging sessions. So another one is putting a dummy con condition control. So let's say if you don't want to run this kind of um, delete session, delete thing. So you can put a dummy condition on top of it. So let's say one is equal to one, it will always true. So it will just go to this yes condition step. So what you can do is you can put your step that you don't want to run. So it is more like uh, commenting the codes and it will just skip through and just run the rest of the process. So that's how you can use this dummy condition control to temporarily comment your code. And another one is clip to my clipboards. This is OK, but it can be a bit dangerous. So let's is how you copy this clip uh, step into your clipboard. Um, I, I want to. Um, let's say copy this into my clipboard and I just delete the step. And I, I just run this flow and test and run in the flow. And towards the end, when I just want to re-add this one, I can just copy it and add it, re-add it back in the in the from the clipboard. Uh, but this one is dangerous as I mean, um, just say your browser crash or whatever happens and your flow step cannot be added back from the clipboard. So in that case, um, you will need to rewrite that those steps or take, take it from the backup if there's any. The last item that you can use is using the static result. So in, in the this flow steps, let's say I've, I have this one in the settings, um, so if you want to skip this step, list all accounts, you can go to the static result and you can enable the static result. By doing so, this step will not be actually run um, when you try the flow and it will just give the dummy result as the output, no matter whether your expression in this step is right or not, it will always be succeeded and it will return as OK. So if you want to add more values in the output, you can specify in this headers. Um, yeah, so that is all about the getting the debugging tips. And I'll move on to the next step where we're going to find the flow runs by um, getting the flow run UID. The first way is finding it manually. Uh, manually, as I mean, if you have, um, let's say I have a flow run like this, and I want to figure out what is this field one. Let's say I, I just want to get the flow run ID of the test contact 10. In that case, um, I just get the GUID of the test contact 10. And I want to find the flow run related to this test contact 10. So before that, we just go and check what is the time of this flow run happen. So this flow is running at the around Test contact then was around uh, 3 23 p.m. And it was the 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 last um, the fourth last item created. But if you go to here, um, you can see there are some items with a 323, and we can't really rely on the order because all these flows are asynchronous and some of those may run earlier than the other if if, if the records are created uh, almost at the same time. In that case, you, you just open up uh, a couple of them around the same time. And let's say I just open three of them and I 
let's find this GUID that I copy. OK, so this one doesn't have the, the GUID that I wanted. And check another one. And OK, so this is the GUID. So normally it contains in the, the contact ID or the primary field GUID field of this contact uh, for, of the table or it always in the internal item ID, so you can always identify this. So that's that's how you can identify the the flow run related to the particular row ID manually. But let's imagine um, if you are have like twenty rows or thirty row uh, thirty flow runs around the same time and you which were bulk created or created from from the Excel import and you 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 cannot open up all 2030 and check each and everything manually. Um, in, in that case what you can do is you can export as a flow run history. So let's go back to um, from here you can go, click on the all runs you get to the flow run history and click on the get CSV file. It will just generate a CSV file. And once you get there, you will see the icon like this to download the file. And once you download it, you can get the CSV file like this. And just once you get there, you just copy and find the GUID of the flow, uh, the row ID that you're looking for. And that's one. Okay, before that, what you can do is you can expand the columns a little bit and freeze the header, freeze the top row. And once you get there, you can see there's a run link. So run link is the flow run URL of the row ID that you're looking for. Once you get there, you just go to the browser and open and get the flow run ID. So this is the exactly the exact flow run that trigger based on the GUID of this contact GUID that you're looking for. Yeah, um, it might take a while to load, but I'll move on with the slide. So that is how you get a flow run based on the flow run to UID. Um, but let's imagine we have the flow runs from like more than 2030. We have flow runs from the export flow run only works for I think the hundred or certain number of flow run history. If you want to find some flow runs way back to more than 100 flow runs, um, you can use the flow with the custom connector to find the flow run. So I, I will explain how does it work. Um, if you want to follow through and create the same thing, you, you can follow the blog post. Uh, that I have in the URL of the end of this slide. <clears throat> okay, so this is that flow run that we're looking for. Um, okay, so this is the sample flow that I used to uh, write this blog post. So what it does is, is just accept the flow name the name of the flow and the record UID. So in, in, in this case, uh, what I want to enter is um, de debugging and tr troubleshooting cloud flows. So contact it. So this will be the first parameter um, for for the for the first test step if I test if I want to test. So the second one is the record UID. So this is the one and second one is the record UID, which is the UID of the contact record that I want to find. 
So this is the parameters for this manual flow. And what it does is just initialize the flow run history array. And before we start, I just go and find the, the GUID, unique ID of this flow with the flow name. And this is the, um, the custom connector to get the flow run history. It is not documented by Microsoft. It is not part of the official Microsoft doc documentation. And um, Stephen, one of the other MVPs, blogged about it. And so I just make use of it to get this solution. What it does is provide the environment name, whether this is the, the you are the host of um, the this part, the you are environment ID name. And the flow name is actually the flow GUID that we got from this step. And the ABI version is static for now. Okay, so if this is the custom connector, um, is the host is this API, all, all these values that you see here are mentioned in the blog post of mine or Stephen's. So you can just follow through and create your own custom connector. Um, and it is just actually appending these parameters to and requesting from the flow runs from this URL. So once uh, we get it, we pass the JSON value from the get flow runs. And the uh, interesting part is these flow runs does not contain the 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 GUID of the records in its value. So we do and query the trigger value based on its value. And then after each trigger, we will get and append it into that flow run history variable. So that, that is where we get a run ID, run URL, data, and time and status. So the, if that's time, as I mentioned previously, all of the triggers contain the value called internal item internal ID, which is the GUID of the row. And if it is equal to, and then it just edits append this flow run history into the array variable. And once it is there, you can just export it out and see what are the flow run histories and when did it run for this particular row GUID. So that is how you can find out the flow run using another on the band flow. That's um, uh, that's useful when you cannot export when your flow runs are more than 100 flow runs and the ones that you you're trying to find is not available in the downloaded csv file and the next method is the background um, so um, uh, let's say when back in the classic workflows we have this background processes which is attached to the records. So we can just simply go to the form associated view and see what are the classic workflows ran related to this particular row or records. And with the flows, for now we don't have such functionalities, but what we can do is we can just log them as, more, as like a custom build solution. Imagine we have this custom um, a custom activity table. It's called like flow run history that will contain all the flow names and what is the trigger, what was the status, and when it started, and what is the flow run history. We can easily refer and we can just simply open this URL as long as it's within 30 days and it is not deleted um, from the flow run history table. <coughs> So logging the flow runs seems quite intimidating. Um, it's there are a lot of steps, but if you go to this blog post, there's a URL of a solution in my GitHub repo. So all you can do is you can just download the solution and input it into your environment, 
and you can just try and use based on your own needs. You, uh, you don't have to log as much details as this solution, or you can just do depending on how you would like to um, log. So for this example, this is running for account edits or modify or deleted, and just um, running that initializing all these required variables first. And this is the main step. So the idea is your flow loggings are everything outside of this scope. And this scope is where your main logic is. Um, let's say you, you want to do some calculations. You want to create this, create that, update this, and delete some icon uh, re records. You can do all these logics within the scope. That's because all these flat uh, flow steps outside of this, this will run as a successful after this. This will log as fail. This will, if this scope is timed out, it will go to this route. So in all scenarios, it will go into these three steps and they will just merge into this um, the rest of the logging parts. So this part is just to log the error message if there is any, because the error message of the scope doesn't contain in a simple way. You have to burst a lot different um, level of first thing to figure out the um, error message. So that, that's why it's a little bit com complicated. And if there's a value, just set this value in this um, error message variable. This is to find out the trigger. So it's just reading this SDK body slash SDK message. And if it is create and is just updating the trigger event as a create update delete. And after that, it will just create this flow run history, which is the this particular one one row in this flow run history table. And this is for flow run is if the flow run is caused by the trigger by the user, it will log as a flow run history's owner. And if it is not a delete event, it, it is associated this flow run to this regarding records. And then this step is to terminate this flow as the same as this scope. So it, it, if the scope comes as the if this scope comes as a fail state, this flow will also be terminated as a failure. So that is just to dynamically um, terminate this flow so that we can see the flow run step history with the correct status. So it is complicated. This solution is complicated because you need to build everything in for each and every flows that you want to log. And you have to write a flow, your main logic over here. So it's a, a bit of an overkill if your flows are simple. And so you can use this flow run history as a child flow. So what it does is this is the main trigger and it will call the child flow and log of the most of the flow status and it will just go to the rest of the flow logics. So that all you have to do is whenever you, you just create a one child flow and in the next, all of the flows that you want to log, you just add this uh, run child flow step and call this child flow. So, so this is the child flow. Um, it just received the workflow and trigger as a JSON parameter. And it just passed the JSON. And just pretty much similar to the flow, oh, this flow like this. It just create, update, and delete. It just update and create a flow run. 
and if there's a trigger by the user, it updates the set the owner of this flow run history activity. And it just respond back to the parent flow. So let's see how we use this in our parent flow. Um, and this is just one of the flow triggers and it called this tab flow. It passed through this require parameters, the parent uh, or flow and the trigger parameters. And once this flow run history, we will have to set the regarding because in order to make it generic, I couldn't set this regarding in the child flow. So these are the two two steps will, uh, required to be done for each and every flow steps. And the rest of the flow steps are just your main logic. Since your flow steps are doing as a child flow, it it cannot actually detect whether the this the re remaining steps are fail time out or successful so in that case this solution is more convenient and is easier to configure for a lot of your flows but it is it, it couldn't it cannot detect and log more as much information as the previous solution so that's the only um, two difference and you might want to choose based on your um, project requirement. So yeah, this is all about running chat flow and both of these solutions are in my blog post and you can go to this blog post and download the solution and um, you can try it in your own environment. Okay, um, that's all for now. So yeah, if you still want to download the slide, you can scan this QR code, or if you have any questions, you can unmute yourself or enter in this chat window. Hey, Lynn, it's uh, Ben here. Um, Hey Ben. You guys hear me okay? How's it? Hey, cool. Um, that was a good preso. Um, there's a few little tricks there that I wasn't aware of, so thanks for showing that. I do have one question, but it's not really related to debugging. It's more around triggering of a flow. Um, have you ever been able to successfully trigger a flow by calling a URL, like a webhook, um, but from an uh, but anonymous anonymously? Yeah. To say if you had some. Yeah. Is that possible with flow, or do you? Yeah. Yeah, well, you just have to create a webhook. Um, the I think it's a HTTP call, um, and then it will generate the URL. So you, you use that URL to um, post the uh, whatever information that from the external system. So we're using that to accept the. Uh, in my, one of my projects, they have this contact us form, <clears throat> and in the contact us form, when they when once the user submits the name, phone number, email address, and the description of the feedback, they submitted this into my flow, and my flow would just parse this value in the JSON and create it as a inquiry or lead in the Dynamics 365. So. Oh. Yeah, cool. All right. I'll give that a go. Yeah, it's just um, something popped up the other day where I was going to try and activate a flow with my Fitbit watch. I was just I was stuck oh. on the anonymous authentication bit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I I, I will leave that um, blog post in this chat window so you can try it out. Yeah, cool. Thanks for that. That's it from me at this stage. Any, anyone else got any other questions? I think that's it at the moment. I think so. um, everyone is quiet. <laughs> All 
are probably very busy at the workplaces. So <laughs> it's hard for them to probably speak and ask the questions. Um, do you want to add anything else, Lynn, or would you like to suggest us next presenter for our next month's user group? Or any <laughs> topic would you recommend us? Well, um, has Rami presented over here? No. Okay. Um, yeah, you can reach out to Rami Mola. Um, he is like really active community, like chapter leads for our Wellington user group. So I think yeah, he he can he can give you like some insights about the ELM process and um yeah he, he he's really active in this community and he's sort of also sort of like my senior mentor back in datacom we work together and also in the dxc so yeah i think yeah he would be a good fit for uh, one of the user group sessions that you will have thanks for that yeah sure we'll definitely We'll ping him and see if it's availability. So I'm sure it's a good time for you guys in New Zealand to present at this time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a better good time. So it's towards the end of the day, so that we can just tell. Okay, we're heading off early today. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> and that's a good reason to leave early. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, and um, the, there is a uh, the boot camp thing happening um, this over this weekend. For those who are not aware, it's a uh, Urdu uh, Hindi Bootcamp 2021. Yeah, I saw that one. It's quite interesting. Presenters mm -hmm. like the big list here. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. they are covering so, different domains, not only Dynamics and uh, Power Platform, they're covering yes. four or five different streams. Yes, they're really like if you just go through this and if you're um, just English speaker, or you 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 can you 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 want to learn those in your own native language, you, know, you can check it out. Uh, or you and uh, if you can speak, uh, understand these two language Hindi. Yeah, that's one thing happening soon. Ah, that sounds good. So now I'm part like part of the uh, you can say that the founding members of this group from because. Oh. Based I'm from Pakistan, so these all guys contacted us and we decided to create this group, Faisal and other guys. So yeah, that's a very interesting topic. I'm just not much involved at the moment, but uh, it's, uh, I think so they organized a lot of different presenters. Thanks for sharing that one. Um, anyone else has any questions or before we can wind up early today and we can let Lynn to enjoy his time which he <laughs> dedicated for this particular time so maybe he can write another blog post and share <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm trying <laughs> okay. Th thanks lynn and hope so we will see you soon with another exciting topic yeah definitely um thanks for inviting to this user group sessions and it it's really good that we're i'm able to present online, which couldn't be possible otherwise you know, to fly over <laughs> there to the presentation. <laughs> uh, that's always a pleasure to have you guys. Um, yeah, so on this note, probably we can wind up and Peter, if you can stop the recording. I'll do that now. Thank you very much. <laughs>